entire career has spanned 21 years in the sales industry. And I started out telemarketing, now probably called an SDR or BDR, depending on how, the, how you may define that particular role. And what I do know is from back then to today, there is a huge change in the way that we sell and the way that we engage with our buyers. And what I want you to remember from today, just one thing, if you only remember, is hashtag don't do normal. You see, everything that we did, rewinding back 10 years ago and back, everything that we did, everything that we were trained to do, everything that we learned has fundamentally changed in the way today and how today we engage with our buyers. And I'm gonna prove that here today um, to you guys. And as you were thinking about how can I get my sales organization or myself as a salesperson or as a sales leader to be able to engage with those buyers, our buyers, our target market, I want you to remember, don't do normal. Now, once upon a time, you may remember there were three companies, Borders, Blockbuster, Toys R Us. In fact, with these three companies, some of these companies we had jingles, like the Toys R Us. I don't wanna grow up, I'm a Toys R Us kid. There's a million toys in store for us that I can play with more. Can everybody say it? Uh, everybody's got the little headphones on, so it's hard for you to be able to speak that. But the point is, is we remember that. As we grew up, many, most of us in the room, we remember this particular jingle. Now, unfortunately, this will not be around for our children or our children's children to be able to participate and go to these, this toy store. The question you have to ask yourself with Borders, Blockbuster, or Toys R Us is, what the heck happened? What happened to each of these three companies, and why should you care as a salesperson or as a sales leader? So let me give you, uh, we're gonna do a poll here in the audience. Do you think that it was technology that changed the game, customers wanted to buy differently, or leadership did, did not adapt fast enough? Let's show, do a show of hands. All of you think that it was technology changed the game on these three companies, raise your hand. All right, raise your hand if you think it's the customers wanted to buy differently. Okay, about another third of the room. And leadership did not adapt fast enough. Raise your hand. Okay, almost everybody in the room said it was that one. So, what's the answer? The answer is, ready? All of the above. All of the above. Technology changed the game, customers wanted to buy differently, and leadership did not adapt fast enough to the changes that were being made by the buyer. This is very important that you understand that the buyer changed the game on these companies. But now we have to ask ourselves, does that impact me in B2B sales as an example? Does it impact my sales organization? So let's just think about this. How many calls does your sales organization have to make in order to be able to have three conversations? Generally, that number is less than, uh, I, I'm sorry, is about 100. They have to make about 100 calls to be able to get a little under 10 conversations. 100 calls to get about 10 conversations. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is, what are you doing about the other 90% that you're not reaching? Statistics show that uh, you'll, you will get about three out of 100 people through a cold call. You'll get about another three through emailing out of 100 people. So let's just say we triple that and we give you 10 plus one, right? We'll give you 10, 10 out of 100. You as sales leaders or you as sales people, you must figure out how to engage with today's buyer. And if you do not have a plan to address the other 90% of your target market, you will fail. You will be just like those companies that we showed, Borders, Blockbuster, and Toys R Us because something has changed. Let's talk about that something. So, the thing I want you thinking about is, has technology changed the game on you as a sales leader and as a salesperson? I'm gonna go through four cardinal attributes of today's modern buyer, four. And I'm gonna prove to you how the buyer has changed the game on us. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is that today's modern buyer is digitally connected. The second thing that we're gonna talk about is that they're socially engaged. The third thing is that they're mobile attached. And the fourth thing, they are video hungry. 
Now these are the four cardinal attributes of today's modern buyer. And as we go through these next sets of sites, I'm going to prove to you that these four cardinal attributes exist in today's modern buyer. And if you walk away with, yes, yes, I agree, that the modern buyer has changed, the question is, is what are you doing differently to engage with that modern buyer? So, proof point number one, they are digitally connected. The statistics show that an average of three points, uh, sorry, each person worldwide owns 3.64 connected devices. 3.64, that's pretty easy. iPhone, iPad, uh, an iWatch, that's three right there. Add on your laptop, that's a fourth one. Now this is worldwide, and some of you may even have more than that. So, 3.64 connected devices worldwide on average per person. What do you think that someone's doing with a connected device? Clearly connecting. They're pooling information or they're pushing information. Would you agree, yes or yes? All right, fantastic. So, this is what we know, that they are digitally connected. Now we have to think about what they are doing and we'll talk about that in just a second. The next thing that we wanna showcase is that they're socially engaged. Well, here's the statistics that showcase between 2008 and between 2017, 24% of the US population had a social networking profile, and at the end of 2017, 81% had a social networking profile. Now, this included well over 200 different social networking profiles, including things like the dating.com type sites, all right? But let's just rattle off, yell out the big six. What do you think those big six are? Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, good. What else? YouTube. YouTube, good. Anything else? Any other takers? We said Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. How about Snapchat? Right? So those are some of the big, big six right there. So the point is, is that we now utilize these tools. Anytime that you wanna know how to do something, especially a, a work at home project, where do you go? YouTube, exactly right. So we are utilizing this day in, day out on a personal basis. And the same applies in the business. And we'll talk about in, that in just a moment. Now, oh man, I messed up. I teed it up, wrong. Here we go, the third item. Uh, I'm going to prove to you that we are a mobile attached society. Here, by this picture right here. Now. Most often times I have you raise your hand and say, uh, how many of you in the room have taken your phone to the bathroom with you? Raise your hand, it's embarrassing, I know, but I've done it as well. All right, for those of you that are not raising your hand, you're being very, very shy. But point is, is that we would have never thought to have shown this picture 10 years ago because we would have never talked about actually taking our device 10 years ago. More importantly, the fact that we take it into the bathroom in and of itself is kind of a problem and an addiction, wouldn't you think? The point is here is that we are a mobile attached society and we are constantly walking around with this mobile device and we're attached to it almost 24 by seven. How many of you sleep next to your mobile device at nighttime on the nightstand? Raise your hand if you sleep next to it. Almost the majority of the room. Now, I'm sad to say, I oftentimes wake up before my wife does and I'll grab my phone before even when she wakes up before, and I'm still playing on it while she's, while she's awake, right? How sad is that? But it's because we're connected and we're pushing and pulling and gathering details and information and we're researching. And that's what our buyers are doing as well. Now the fourth thing I'm going to prove out to you was video hungry. Some of the top marketing tactics that are being used in 2018 and in 2019 continue to be the use of video inside of marketing uh, one to many. Now, if we know that marketers, as defined by Content Marketing Institute, if we know that marketers are utilizing video as a way to engage with their buyers, and it is a top tactic, and we know that marketers market one to many, salespeople market one to one. So if video marketing works here, why would we not be leveraging video, video for sales here. Here's the proof point. By the end of this year, 
It is predicted that 76% of the world's internet traffic will be as a result of consuming video. Do you know what the second largest search engine is in the world? Wild guess, anyone? YouTube, owned by the first search engine, first largest search engine in the world, Google, right? So 76%. Now, Cisco put out a study and said that by 2021, this number will rise to 81% of the world's, consu the consumed internet traffic will be as a result of video. This is astounding, this particular number. And as sales leaders, you have to be thinking about, wait a minute, if this is accurate, and our buyers are digitally engaged, mobile attached, socially engaged, as well as video hungry, are my salespeople using digital, social, video, email, texting, are they using it correctly to engage with their buyer? And I would argue that most of our sales teams have been trained on the art of closing, the relationship building, the art of calling, cold calling. But most of our sales teams have never been trained on the art of actually, what does it take to get a real response from a buyer through a social engagement? How do you actually, in the first seven seconds of a video message that you send, how do you engage that buyer, a, a concept called thin slicing? How do you engage in the first seven, se seven seconds to be able to get that buyer to continue watching that video? What type of content should you serve up to them on your video sales landing page? Or if you're sending out an email, what type of valuable information should you use and what business problems should you speak to when you're actually trying to add value in the sales process? And these, is, these items here that I've just listed are unfortunately a lost skill. So the next thing I wanna talk about and answer the question is, are our B2B customers buying differently? Now this information is actually taken from Gartner, CEB, uh, CEB, now a Gartner company. And this goes through uh, the B2B buying process and the percent of time that is spent on different buying activities. Now this data is about, a, uh, little, about almost two years old now. That having been said, not much has changed outside of the fact that what you'll find here, it's now even, even worse. Let's take a look at this. First off, Buyers were surveyed and they said what they're doing is they're researching independently online 27% of the time of the entire buying process. We right now are, th are going through a software um, purchase process and we have reviewed 27 different software providers for a certain service that we're looking for, 27. Of those 27, I have hosted about 10 calls because I was able to do majority of my research online without ever talking to a salesperson to determine if they would meet our needs based upon our business requirements and the integrations that we need to be able to sync into our, our, our systems and tools. And of those 10, I got on the phone with them, sent them an email and said, here are my 21 things I'm looking for. I am now at this phase of the purchasing process. I have a budget and I am ready to buy within three weeks. I want to speak to your executive, I want to speak to you, um, to you and get a full demo, and I want your sales engineer to be on the phone because I have very technical questions that could not be answered based upon my research. And do you know, out of those 10 companies, out of those 10, how many of them brought their sales engineer and arranged an executive call that mapped to my buying process, how many of them did that? One, one, all of them started out with, nope, you gotta talk to our BDR first. We need to be able to assess whether or not we're a good fit. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I just told you that I assessed based upon information. I pulled this report, this study. I went to Gartner, I went to Forrester. I grabbed all this data and did this research myself. But the sales team, including the sales leaders, did not align to the buyer's journey. They wanted me to map to the sales journey. And that, my friends, is a lost art there. It is no longer being used because the buyers are spending this time doing the research. But here's the better part. Now, they don't even talk to the, uh, to the to vendors like ourselves. Because we sell, obviously. They now spend the next portion of time meeting with the internal buying group. And that's exactly what we did as we reviewed these different applications. We had a group and we came back together and said, what did you research? Because they took five, they took five, I took three. You know, we had, we had it parsed out. We said, oh, yes, yes, no, yes, yes, no. Put them on the short list, keep moving them along. 
this is the time that we're spending. And then we start saying, you know what? We found this out. Is this a requirement for us? Oh yeah, that's a good point. Oh, is this a requirement? Oh yeah, that's a good point. Maybe we should go back. So we did all this internally before even ever going out. Now we go out, buyers meet together, and then uh, everybody in the room says, hey, who do you know? And now buyers go out and they start researching independently offline. They, a buyer, turns around, does exactly what I did. I turn around and said, you know what? Why are we reinventing the process on this? There are many other companies that are our size, that are in our network, that have done this before. Why don't I just call up Susie, Johnny, Billy, and Mary? And you go call up whoever else that you want to call up. And that was the process that we took, was researching independently offline, getting the referrals. Now, notice that we are uh, well into the buying process and not one time did a buyer say that they are actually talking to a salesperson. Now comes meeting with suppliers. 17% of the buying time is spent meeting with suppliers, but here's the thing. What portion of that is actually meeting with you? The other, you can read the study, you can look at what the other men. But I wanna talk about what portion of time was actually spent with you. If you imagine that you've got three competitors that you're constantly competing against, just three, that means that you're approximately getting one third of the 17% of the buying process time spent with you. And when you look at this data, you probably say, is that real? I am telling you, we have gone through now, not only a software, but we're also going through a service partner that we're looking for to handle certain things related to our backend infrastructure from a consulting standpoint. It is no different, it's the exact same process. In fact, we've eliminated multiple people that, we've reached, that have reached out to us as a result because I don't wanna deal with anybody that actually I have no experience with. So I started with my referral list first. The seven people that I was referred to, I wanna talk with them. And it's super important that we understand this, that you're literally only spending about 6% of the entire buying time as a sales team and as a salesperson. Now the question you might ask yourself is, did this buying journey change across millennials, Gen Xers, and boomers? Well, here's the data that CEB identified. First, millennials use digital channels throughout the entire buying process. Now millennials, as you know, make up 50% of our workforce. So they use digital channels throughout the entire buying process. What about Gen Xers? Gen Xers started out almost the exact same as millennials, and towards the end, they dropped off to about 81%. Why? Well, they wanted to start working on the relationship. Can I trust this individual? Can I buy from this individual? Can I do some executive alignment? So that was less important to them at that particular time. What about baby boomers? Baby boomers said, no, no, relationships are important up front. Let me spend some time really getting to know this individual and whether or not I can trust them. Then let me go out and go research. And then after that, it's still about executive alignment, relationship building. Overall, what you will see is that throughout the entire buying process, each one of our buyer types utilize digital channels to research information prior to picking up the phone and speaking to you and or your sales team. And oh, by the way, millennials are moving into the senior executive buying decisions starting now. So if you are not thinking about how can my sales team leverage digital channels, you could be the next Borders, Blockbusters, or Toys R Us. So, this is one of my favorite slides. This is talking about a, a subject that is very near and dear to my heart. Sales is not about selling. Sales is the art of helping. Customers no longer want to be sold to. This is the old way of selling. This is how I grew up starting 21 years ago, and most of us that are in this audience right now, how you grew up as well. The old way of selling included cold call, email blasting, attending networking events, asking for referrals. Were there other ways? Sure, knocking on business parks. How many of you ever knocked on business parks? Or doors on business parks? All right, a few of us in the room. I did the same thing as well. Those are all but forgotten because you can't even get into some of these uh, locations now because of security, okay? So there are a couple other ways, but this is fundamentally the old way of selling. Now most people would say, Mario, as a digital sales influencer, uh, is the old way of selling dead? The answer, let's talk about the new way of selling. 
you will notice that in the new way of selling, the old is right dead center in the middle. You still need a phone to be able to have a conversation with somebody. And you still, sometimes with some buyers, cannot reach them through digital channels, through email, through video, through social. However, our job as salespeople and sales leaders has become much more complex. And that is we now introduce texting into the mix. What's proper protocol on what you should and when you should text? Have you trained your sales team on that? What about social networks? You'd be surprised over the amount of, of uh, examples that we as a digital sales training company showcase to our training clients over the bad examples of how salespeople are engaging online with CXO type of individuals, buyers. In addition, video. We talked about this concept of video and leveraging video uh, and using that as a way to be able to engage. Digital referrals. You know, let me ask you this question. How many of you, by a show of hands, have that old school Rolodex with that big old turning ball, A, B, C, D, all the way to Z, indexed uh, with business cards on your desk? Raise your hand. None. None. I'm not surprised. Why? I don't even know if they make those things anymore. The reality is, is we've moved away from that. And either you're storing your contacts in, C in the CRM, which most of our sales reps don't do, or you're using a free tool called LinkedIn that now has become your digital Rolodex. I can store every single person that I've ever met inside of LinkedIn, and not only that, I can filter on those individuals any way that I want. Size of company, name, content they may have posted, whether or not they posted anything in the last 30 days, whether or not they've had an announcement in the news, an anniversary, a birthday, I can do anything I want with my digital Rolodex. But that old school Rolodex that we used to hire salespeople for, guess what? You may not even remember that you had Billy Bob inside there under the letter B. It's gone, that has changed now. And digital referrals, the statistic shows that 84% of B2B buyers started the buying process with the referral. So the question you have to ask yourself is, are my sales people and sales teams, are they, do they have a connection strategy to bring them into their LinkedIn network, as an example, so that they can mine that for digital referrals? The other thing we're seeing is the buyer engages you. In my example, I did not put out a blast saying, hey, I'm looking for this new software application. I went out and researched them, and I pulled in all 10 vendors that I wanted to talk to. And last but not least, sales AI. If you go to vigresso.com, you'll actually engage with one of our uh, AI SDRs. It is, she is amazing, her name is Jenna. And Jenna is phenomenal. In fact, she has higher LinkedIn SSI scores than some of our own salespeople. It's the funniest thing in the world. Jenna never sleeps, she never makes a mistake, and she never forgets to follow up. And so we utilize that technology and that's a, a, a great new technology. So at this point in time, you've gotten the proof point that showcases what has happened and what has changed across the buyer's journey. Leaders really have three choices. You can do absolutely nothing, you can let the competition go first, or you can adapt and get help. You can realize that the world has changed around you and all the sales training that you have done has been focused on from the moment in time that someone says hello to someone says thank you for the order. That's most of our sales training of the $2.2 billion that are spent in sales training it is all around there. But what about getting more hellos? What about these channels that we just talked about and the right skill set to be able to adapt, to be able to engage with today's modern buyer? So I wanna give you four tips for digital leadership. And those four tips uh, we're gonna showcase right now. You'll wanna take your cameras out because there'll be some, um, some stuff you can take back to your office. First off, you're an executive. And as an executive, you have a, a responsibility to the organization to be able to showcase when you're, talent, when you're doing talent recruitment, you have a responsibility to show that person that you are the person and the company that, they, that you are recruiting for is the company that they want to work for. How do you do that? It's through your profile. Guys, we look, before we interview anybody, you pull that resume, and one of the first things that almost every sales leader tells me is that they go out to that person's LinkedIn profile. Or in some cases, organizations are doing Facebook searches to figure out what this person is saying or doing out on Facebook or Twitter. Well, recognize that, number one, it's your digital brand. It's your digital Rolodex. It is also your business card. 
I do not have a business card. We connect via LinkedIn. That's how we have. That's how we connect. Google, Yahoo, and Bing will actually search index your LinkedIn profile. And if you search Mario Martinez Jr. on Google, guess what? You'll find in number two position, Mario Martinez's LinkedIn profile. Twitter number three, Vengresso.com number one. It's our mini micro site. Companies cannot survive without a website. They're marketing one to many. But wait a minute. Our reps are marketing now one to one. Why haven't we turned their individual profiles into a company messaging that speaks to who you help, how you help, and what business problem you solve? And if you're a sales leader, for God's sakes, ladies and gentlemen, this is your talent recruitment page. This person is looking at working for you and the style that you possess. Are you the type of leader they want to work for? Demonstrate that through what you post, your thought leadership, your content. Now, this one actually, you want to take your phones out right now. And you're not going to go on a, on a list, but I'm going to show you as a direct result something that I promise you've never seen before. I promise you, you've never seen this before. Email right now, mario at vengresso, one S, V-E-N-G-R-E-S-O dot com, and just say open top 18. That's all you have to say. And I will respond to you with an out of office reply. It is a video message out of office reply. I promise you've never seen anything like this. I promise that you um, have not engaged with a salesperson just like this. But when you do, I want you to obviously not watch the video now, but when you receive that back, I want you to watch that video and I want you to, to watch how I direct you to content that is going to help you along the journey that you may be looking for. All right, so mario at vingresso.com. Everybody got that? Fantastic, that's tip number two. Tip number three, take a picture of this. Uh, we teach in our training courses that a salesperson should invite their manager to all of their meetings. Now, generally what we say is to send the invitation out, open it back up, turn around, invite your manager, and your manager obviously cannot attend every single sales meeting. But what you want to have happen is as a manager, you want to be able to connect with that particular buyer. You can't be on every meeting, but you want that buyer to feel like they have an executive connection into the organization. And as important, you want to be able to have the connections being built up on LinkedIn with your seller. And guess what? We have a 25% uh, churn ratio in our sales team. If that salesperson goes away, so does that Rolodex. But guess what you have? You still have that Rolodex. So keep that person and bring them into your network. And this is a script that you can use as a sales leader to be able to connect with um, that particular uh, buyer. And tip number four, if you have a sales team that is uh, at least 25 salespeople or more, we do this thing called the Digital Benchmark uh, Assessment. And in that assessment, we actually uh, will showcase to you what are all the skills that you have and don't have. So if you want it, it's a survey that we send out. It literally takes your salespeople 60 seconds to fill it out. And then we give you a full analysis of what you are good at and what you're not so good at. So Digital Selling Benchmark Report is another tip there as well. Um, all right, here's the opportunity where all of you can take out your phones again. If you thought these tips were of value, if you found them of unique value to you, what I want you to do is uh, text the word Mario, M-A-R-I-O, to 38470. This one, yes, you will go on our email marketing list, but you will receive on a weekly basis content and material from videos to blog articles to podcasts. I have the sell Selling with Social podcast, which is a sales podcast, a very popular one. And I think you'll find some value out of that. So this is a way that you can weekly get, gain some information and some content. Uh, everybody got that? Good to go? All right. I'm going to give you one last tip. I know I'm over time. They're trying to weigh me down. But this, this tip is the one you're going to take away and you're going to bring back to your sales team. So take out your devices. Open up LinkedIn. And what I'm going to show you are two things that you probably are not doing and or you don't know if your sales team is doing and you wanna take this back to your sales team. So, once you have LinkedIn open, I want you to just type in the name of the white search bar at the top, type in Mario Martinez Jr. Jr. M-A-R-I-O-M-A-R-T-I-N-E-Z Jr. Jr. You should see me, I have a red, pitch, a red background and a uh, cream colored sports coat, all right? Now when you're on that particular profile, we're likely not connected. There are two things that you can do. The first tip I'm gonna show you, you see that big follow button? Raise your hand if you see a follow button. All right, 
Your sales reps, you can teach them how to follow a buyer. If you click follow, I will get a notification that I've been followed by you. This is a social touch point. When you, your sales team is trying to get the attention of a buyer, follow them. And it notifies the buyer that you follow them. The next thing I wanna teach you is something that you're gonna take back to your office, you're gonna to say to your sales team, don't ever do what you've always done before, do this. So there's a, a more button on my profile, click the more button. When you see that more button, you see a, an option that says personalized invite. Raise your hand if you see that. Fantastic. Click personalized invite. And just put open top 18 conference. This will be the trigger event that, that uh, helps you and I remember how we met each other. Your sales team will now be able to go through and for every single connection that they ever make, they will be able to personalize that invite. And that, my friends, we have a study that we did with 1,176 connections requests that we sent out. 76% acceptance on 1,176 connections with buyers that we target. 76% by personalizing an invite. That's the difference in terms of how to get connected with the buyer. Does that make sense? All right. And then of course, we are on YouTube. Uh, you can search for Vingresso and on Twitter and uh, that, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, if you only remembered one thing today, remember, don't do normal. <laughs>